Welcome back. Welcome back to the next episode of the Weather Lake Cruise Draft League uh, Series 3, I believe. Yeah, it's week three. Week three. Let's take a look at us. <gasps> oh, it's not too bad. What's not too bad? I'm just trying to trying to get the uh, this poster Where we are. reflecting off the light and Oh, no. uh, we'll decor it eventually. We'll make it good. Matt's got his hair chopped. He's yes. looking good. I feel about like four pounds lighter now. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, but I, on the other hand, am keeping the mop for a little bit longer. We'll see how it works. Uh, looks good so far. Um, these mics. I'm gonna get closer to Matt, but I can't because uh, <laughs> the the I gotta get these mics where we are. a little bit more. But here we are. Uh, Weather Lake Crew Season One Draft League Week Three. Yep. We did Strixhaven to start. How are we doing? Oh, apparently we're all last uh, speakers. There's, there's two things. Uh, keep going for now. Keep okay. going for now. Adrian, we'll hey, Kootenai's here. here. What's going on, Kootenai? Needs yeah. sound balance. Uh, so it's, it's right now, it's all on the left. I'm fixing that right now. Oh, it's so on, on this side? Yeah, there, there's a separate issue that I'm dealing with. If it wasn't technical difficulty, it wouldn't be... Well, it wouldn't be six sides. But, uh, you know, we're slowly getting this going. It's a pretty ambitious draft, I'm not going to lie. A pretty ambitious uh, thing we're doing because, let's face it, uh, we are trying to get eight people drafting live. And I know nothing about the details of Magic the Gathering enough to be a commentator, except for that I'm going to be what's called the dummy host. I want to be the ignorant host that is trying to figure things out. Matt here is our prestigious know-it-all. And we... <laughs> know, it, know it most. No, he's pretty good, actually. Know it most. Know, know it most. But understands what's going on well enough to be able to kick it out and, uh, and, and give us all the, all the love in Magic. He's doing a great job so far, so I'm very happy to have him here. Uh, plus, he just knows how to... He knows interactions. He knows Magic. That being said, uh, we are the third weekend, which means the first week we did Strixhaven, second week we did... Does it sound good, Bob, by the way? Let me know. First week we did Strixhaven, second week, which was last week, we did Keltheim. And then the third week, which is today, we're doing Zendikar Rising. Next week is going to be off as we were adventuring off into... The Forgotten Realms. Oh, I know. I'm excited for that. That's, ex that's yeah, well, I'm, I'm ready. I'm I ready. Have, I have to miss it, but I will be back. Oh my God, you're missing it. I have to miss it, but I will be back for the next bunch of Forgotten Realms. Oh, that crushes my soul. so good. No, I, I knew you weren't going to be here for one of the streams. Yes. But I'm the super sad that it wasn't Realm. Forgotten Realms. I'm, uh, I'm going to be off on a venture of a vacation. Ah, so. I see, I see. Well, you know what they say, happy, happy partner, happy life. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, we have eight players who are going through the eight weeks of this league. There's a scoreboard. Some people are not, are not up too high, but, you know, we all know that Jack tries his best. The point is, is <laughs> that we are trying our hardest to... Uh, they're, they're, we're going to try and keep you up, up to date on the scoreboard. This stream is new for us, so we're trying to figure out all the technical layouts and stuff. It's already looking better, and as long as the sound is not all on the left, it's already sounding better. Um, and we're going to do our best to try and uh, and give you guys the best possible performance as we move on. Now, eight players, so we can just dig right into this. Yep. Eight players, uh, we'll introduce them as we go along. They'll all have their uh, name tags. I'll just I'll just go back to the main thing Damn. for a second here. They've all got their name tags. Uh, we'll introduce them as they go. We'll have some of them interviewing back here. They've all got nicknames that are wrath effects, that are uh, punishly, uh, punishingly put into um, their names themselves. So, so for example, uh, one guy, Justin, his name is Justin, and we call him All is Just instead of, instead of the card All is Dust, which is a really crazy wiping effect. Really good. So, Slaughter the Blong over here, or, or Matt Blong, and uh, is going to give us a leaderboard yeah. breakdown as to who is in what position, and hopefully next week we'll have that leaderboard available on the screen here for you, at least as a breakaway screen, so we can jump back and forth. Uh, it went back to the, to the left speaker again. All right, well, we'll get Adrian to check that out. Um, okay, so uh, lead us away. <laughs> All right, so uh, after two weeks, we've got some points coming in. Um, just an update for those of you who may not have been with us since the beginning. How we are doing points for this, uh, this tournament and this draft system is you get three points for winning your match. So if you win your best two out of three, you get three points. However, if you take a game, so if, it, if, you, if you lose a match and you won one game out of the three, so if it was two to one for your opponent, you still get one point. All right? So uh, Chris, uh, what is, where is Chris? Uh, Terma Chris 
leading us off at 15 points. He's up in first. Turbo Chris. Turbo Chris is up in first. Austin, after, after his 3 0 performance last week, uh, has tied up with Hannah in sec, uh, Annihilation in, uh, in second place at 13 points. Uh, we've got in fourth, we've got uh, Kipling Wave, Aaron Kippers. Aaron Kippers. Uh, who do we got next? After that, in fifth place, we've got All Is Just at 11 points. Following closely behind him is Noisic Deluge, Rob Noisic. And then we've got uh, Travis redeeming himself after that first week. Uh, he got seven points last week. So added on to the first from his, uh, his first week at zero points, he's got seven now. Uh oh. And then Jack. Uh, blasphemous good old, Jack. Good old Blasphemous. Good old Legac. Legac Jack in the back. He's got himself. I think the sound is all good now, Adrian. The balance is all fixed on both channels. You sound a little peaky. I'm just going to... No, I'm speaking closer to the microphone than he is. I can lean back. It still shouldn't. Yeah, I mean... How's this? How's this sound? I don't know. Probably good. (laughs) Audience, could I? Could I? The benefactor of our D&D battlegrounds, uh, the savior of our party, out with Richter, is here tonight supporting us. Uh, apparently, we sound better. He says, yep. Okay, so I just will not make love to the microphone, and I will just give it some, some foreplay in the distance. Okay, deal. Okay. All That's right. the plan. Uh, so why don't we get Adrian, them to crack? Yeah, let them know we're good to go. We're going to crack some packs, buddy. No, we don't need time for this. No, tell them to tell them start up. So you're going to hear some crinkling. And that's... I brought some Maynard various. various for Matt 98. Ah. <laughs> ah. I don't know if Lindsay's in chat yet, but... Uh, the Swedish fish argument versus the Swedish berries? The Finnish fish versus the Swedish berries. Mm. I'm not going to turn down the Swedish berries. Thank you. All right. Oh, my God. Maybe, maybe, maybe once pack one goes. All right. We've got a chase in pack one. Uh-oh. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, with, with Zendikar, uh, kind of like Kaldheim, we once again have... All ten of the colors represent, or all ten of the color pairs represented, and so each of the color pairs has a specific um, theme to it and synergy to it that mm-hmm. is kind of how you want to play your deck. Okay. Um, in this first, pa- uh, we'll go over them as we kind of come to them and people start drafting into those colors, and we can kind of talk about them. But uh, in this first pack, we see a couple cool openings. Uh, Blasphemous Jack has an Ashaya. Uh, soul of the world right there. Whoa. So obviously he's really, really game. powerful green card. Where's Jack? Let's find Jack. Uh, bottom right hand corner there. Bam. You can, oh, wow. Commander last place. He's, he's got a pretty, pretty hard pick there. He's got the Ashaya and yeah, he, the G. He's signaling yeah. right there. Showing. Signaling. I told, uh, I told them all to gesticulate with their hands when they, when they've got some cool stuff so that we can catch the motion. Absolutely. Um, so Jack has that decision. I would probably pick the Ashaya. That card is is real, real strong. It is so good. Even even in EDH, any other format. In EDH, it's, it's fantastic. It's in, in something like Draft, where uh, your size of your creatures matters, and especially like for a five-mana creature, it comes down as a 5-5. Five, five. If you have more creatures on the battlefield, it gets bigger. Because its other ability, it, it has its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. It also says that all of your non-token creatures are forests. So they yeah, tap for green mana. so good for ramp. And they also give it plus one, plus one. So actually, it comes down as a 6-6 six, six for five mana. Absolutely fantastic. Busted. That's a bomb. He's really debating between that and Jace. I think if he goes That's Jace, fair. personally, the, knowing how he plays, if he goes Jace, he loses. Um, other picks that some people have made. Let's throw back out to the main screen. Um... Who's that? Ooh. Travis Ooh. took a, Kipling a wave. Oh, Kipling wave took. Uh, he took one of the rare uh, creatures be. that cares about clerics. So black and white in this set cares about. Ooh, he pulls the Jace out from Jack pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, where is it? It is right here. It's the t- Tabrax. Yeah, Tabrax. Hope's Demise. Uh, has lifelink as long as it has five or more 1-1 counters. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 counter on it. Uh, if that creature is a cleric, you may draw a card if you do lose one life. So he's it's a strong flyer. It's three mana for a 2-2 uh, with flying. Let's see if I can get that, that, gets that focus bigger. fixed. Keep going with that. I'll go back to the main screen. One sec. Okay. Um, so he's, he's got a bunch of things to choose from. Um, Black has absolutely fantastic removal in this spell in this set 
Um, just targeted, destroy target creatures. Uh, one of them costs three mana. Uh, really, really strong. As we kind of look around at the table, see what people are drafting. Uh, looks like um, green is also going to be a heavy choice. Um, another cool thing from this set for the mechanics um, we is go. that uh, we, we can stay on this main screen for now because they move packs again. Um, another cool thing from this set is that this is actually where they introduced the party mechanic. Yay! So for all you D&D players out there, before we even get to Forgotten Realms, this is where Magic decided that uh, the cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard mattered. mattered. So for each, some, some color combination, uh, some color combinations have effects that care about uh, you having one of those on the battlefield. <clears throat> uh, like for up to a maximum of one per of those creature types. Right. I'm going to go to the board. Yeah. Well, Adrian's I, I, doing some tech. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the light on Hannah's side is really, really hot on that corner there. Like. Okay. Poor Adrian. <laughs> Speck and Coot and I are in the chat. I'm sure they, they say hi. Before we yeah, no, I know, yeah. I know. No, the the uh, the focus on uh, Kipling is way off. I think he went the wrong direction. Well, we'll jump over here. Bam. Oh, and Alation's out of focus too. Well, we got some focusing issues here, folks. <laughs> so let's jump over to the other camera. That's clear. Oh, Blasphemous Jack's kicking it there. Look at that. Yep. So. Uh, Blue, he's got all green cards, but you see that that uh, couple people there. Kippers did, in fact, take the Jace. Mm -hmm. And Austere Command looks like, it looks to me, like Aust Austin is going in green as well. Yeah, so green in this set is, is quite strong. I actually think it's the third best color. What is the best color? I think blue is the best color. Oh, okay. Blue has a lot of great combat tricks in this set that just, like, shrink down your opponent's creatures by just enough to make while well, providing bodies themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but, so on its own, I think it's the best. Black has outstanding removal in this set. Um, and is also a great supplementary color. Right. So when you combine black with, you know, white and you get uh, the kind of cleric-y sub-theme, uh, it can do a lot of really cool stuff as well. Um, but one thing that this set brought back from all the other Zendikar sets is it brought back Landfall. Mm. And so with Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield, which you get to do uh, once a turn for free, and then if you have any other effects that can put lands into play, each one of them will trigger the, the landfall ability. A lot of that is centered around green and its color pairs. So green red and green white have a lot of it. Those are kind of its it, those color pairs things. Green red wants to be aggressive with it. Green white kind of wants to go wide and tall with it. Um, so green white. Let's go over to uh, our man. To Chris. Yeah. Oh. So he grabbed... It's a little bit blurry, guys. Sorry, we're just still fixing the blur. Adrian's doing his, his best to try and bring it into, into focus. We shouldn't have messed with it beforehand. It was just a couple of cameras that were off. Now they're all off. But uh, Chris looks like he's... We can, we'll just have to talk this out. We know what he's got. So it looks like Chris is also in green. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are going he in green. He looks like he's going green-white. Yeah. He so like he's got like a scythe leopard there. That's for In terms of the heat or the focus? The focus. Focus is off. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not I'm sure. Surprised. Yeah, so it's 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 up on their hair again. Yeah, so I guess. Can't fix it while we're live. Yeah, no worries. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't fix while we're live. No. Oh no. Uh, maybe. Uh, why we need to check these things? <laughs> uh, well, it was fine earlier. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Poor Adrian. He's got to run back and forth between the back. It's, this we're in the back studio right now. It's a brand new studio compared to. Uh, uh, where we normally play D&D, and it is disconnected from the second studio, the third studio, which is where they're all playing Magic right now. And uh, there's a lot of wires connecting everything, so um, hopefully we can get that cleared up. But in the meanwhile, uh, yeah. comment on Turbo Chris's cards. So he's got, it. he's he definitely looks like he's trying to angle into the green-white landfall deck. He's and got that, a Yasharn there, the big uh, gold creature with that looks like a pig. And he's learning very quickly he's getting cut on both. Yes, he's, he's, he, sees, he sees blue and red here. So let's see, he sees the white card. So he might just try and take the white card and ride it out. But Chris Ooh. is is a good drafter, and we'll see that, like, green if it's not showing up this pack 
Uh, it might not show up in future packs. So we'll see what he takes. He might try and pivot to blue here. Um, but he, so uh, Yasharn, as we were talking about there, uh, grabs car, grabs land cards from his deck and puts them into his hand. And also says opponents can't sacrifice permanents to help pay costs. So while that isn't super relevant in a draft format, um, it is super relevant in a format like... Hey, oh, almost, almost. Oh. There we go. We almost got that. I think that's, that's much better. That's much better. We can see things now. If we go over here, it's pretty clean too. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're back into the focus, folks. Okay. Let's go back to the main screen. That looks good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Way better. Okay. Thank you, Adrian. Uh-huh. It's okay. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. It'll be easier once these aren't in the way. Yeah, we'll get there. Oh, yeah, because they're probably stealing focus. Yeah. That's what's stealing the focus. Yeah. The dividers, folks, are stealing the focus and fo forcing... Oh, yeah, can't they, you manual focus? They do look real good. They are manual focus, but I can't see them up there. Oh, you have to see them, them from here. Yeah. I don't have any feedback on what works and what doesn't. Oh, shit. Yeah. Maybe I should yell. <laughs> Adrian! <I'm trying. laughs> good! A little more to the right, Adrian! <laughs> so, um... All right. So Chris did end up grabbing a blue card. So Chris is going to start breaking into a we'll new see. color. So he's going, to, he's going to keep seeing what comes around to him. And he knows that... Every pack right now is going to the left-hand side of the players. Now, our cameras aren't necessarily set up in a way that who is on Chris's left is the player he's passing to. Mm -hmm. um, but he knows that whoever he's passing to is going to see cards after him now um, this round, but whoever's passing to him will see cards after him next round. Because we switch sides, so one round you draft to your left-hand side, next next round you draft to your right-hand side, and then you draft back to your left-hand side. Let's see what Just is doing. Oh, here, oh, he made the right call here, going into blue. Yeah. But now he's so getting all the seeds. Like, that's a that's a is that a bubble snare? I think that's bubble snare. Yeah. Um, and and bubble snare so he's is like, like he's just doing something with his fingers. One there. of the premium removal spells in blue, and it is like. Yeah, it's a bubble snare. Uh, enters the battlefield. Uh, if it was kicked, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanting Creature doesn't untap during its controller's unstap. For one blue. Yeah, so he's definitely he's, he's banting it up now. He's like, banting it up. Well, he might draft three colors. He might switch into blue. But like that bubble snare going so late in the pack uh, is a sign that nobody to his left... Oh, another one. Another one. He's, oh, yeah. my God. So yeah. he sees two bubble snares. He's like... This card is such a premium removal spell yes. in this format that he sees it and he's like, whoever's on my left isn't drafting blue. No. So I'm going to draft blue. Oh, yeah. Now. See, he's communicating that with right? us perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, yeah. Chris. You're the man, Chris. Yeah. He's like, what he's, else? He's, he's, like, why? he's like, why are these cards going? He's like, what's wrong with this team? Well, it might be explained why he's in first place. So speaking of yes. uh, not first place, I'm eh, just kidding. Hey, Justin. Um, Justin over here. Middle well, he's of the back. going for, he's kind of breaking, breaking into blue, but he's debating something. I don't know what he's debating. Uh -huh. Looks like Adrian's he messing with the camera again. Uh, his first pick seems to have been a soul shatter. Um, it makes an opponent sack their strongest creature or a planeswalker. If it's he loves his removal. Yeah. Even in modern or anything else he plays, he loves his removal. And one of the one of the biggest things for drafting, uh, for those of you who may be trying it out on uh, MTG Arena, or as of the 16th, we're allowed people in store again. Oh, we are doing a pre-release at the roundtable slash trading post on Friday. Yeah, so I'll be there. Um, and then one of the big things for drafting once we start getting that back is is a, uh, an acronym I've said before of BREAD. Bombs, removal, evasion, duds. duds. And that's kind of how I, how I draft. Um, and duds just being anything that doesn't have one of the other subcontexts. Look at Chris is like, hold on, go to Chris for me. Okay. Look at this. He's like, I got three bubble snares. How are people not, not drafting this? I, so one thing about these sets is a lot of them, this, a lot of these sets were during COVID. So a lot of people weren't drafting. This Zendikar, like a uh, Zendikar Rising. This is pushing. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that uh, the other card he's pointing to there is the 
what is that? That's Tazim Royal Mage, I think? Yeah, yeah. Tazim Royal, 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 Royal Mage. Uh, enters the battlefield. If it was kick, return target, insert sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Really, really, really good blue common. Like, yep. it and Bubble Snare are, like, top two. So there are two other people playing in blue with him. We've got a Demir capture down here with no sick daily. So I think... Yeah, I think Rob He is, didn't get any bubble snares, but he did get the Royal Mage. Yes, he also got a Jace. Uh, the, some of the Rogue Matters There's two Jaces cards. right now, eh? There's two Jaces. There's, there's a Jace, Jace there, and there's Jace under Kipling there's Wave. There's a Jace and a Foil. Also, there's always. a Jace and a Foil Jace. So, Kipling is... He's also drafting. He's drafting Blue Black Rogues, I think. Oh, my God. So, I think he's going to try and draft the Are they, like, are they like yes. basically doing the... So they're, they're, they're trying to do the same thing. Out. Yeah, he's like, I don't know. Um, he's like, I don't know yet. We've got a bunch of people in green. He's like, I don't know. I don't know. Where? 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 Um, good. Good telegraphing, Rob. This is good. For all you players that watch this later, take a look. <laughs> okay, now what are you doing? <laughs> all right. So everybody's going to kind of slide their cards out and yeah. uh, and go to the second pack here. All right. Let's um, see. Let's so go to the full pack. Some there. of the other color pairings that we haven't really talked about much. We've got uh, green, green blue is kicker matter spells. So it's got cards that, like, when you kick a spell, you get an extra effect. Um, Black-red is about party mechanics. So again, where are you having your warrior, your cleric, your rogue, and your wizard? But it's also about um, good equipment. So it's a lot of things that kind of benefit that. As is the red-white. Red-white is warriors and free attach and stuff like that. Mm. Um, what else is there? Black white is the clerics and life gain that we've talked about. Blue black is rogues and kind of half mill, so it kind of like wants to tax your opponent's cards. So who are we gonna punch in on here? Ooh. So let's 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 look at Chris quickly, because he's he's kind of started drafting blue. He loves blue. His lands. He's gonna. So that it. land becomes a creature. It becomes a four mana. It becomes a creature and gets two one one counters on it, and then. Every time you pay four mana, it gets two one one counters and becomes a creature. Let's go back and check out Captain Last and see how he's doing here. I okay. He's got decide. I think he's deciding between those six cards. <laughs> I, Jack, he's got, he's Jack, got other cards in us. So one thing I don't know what he's doing right now, but one thing I'll say about Jack is that he does play this color well. So I think we'll see a better. Yeah. So if he can him. get into that red green aggro landfall deck, mm -hmm. yeah, really really strong. He plays Shia is super good in that deck yeah. because each creature you play late game counts as a landfall trigger. Yeah, he's holding. He's gonna be. Yeah, he's gonna do better yeah. here. Yeah, he's gonna take good. the. Uh, so he's got two of that equipment now. The pick. The pick. I'm not actually. I never. I didn't really get to draw. I drafted this set a couple times because it was during one of the the, the lulls. The, uh, the pickaxe. The skyclave. Skyclave pickaxe. Pick Whenever enters your battlefield, uh, enchant target creature you control. Landfall. Equip creature gets plus two plus two. That's good. I don't think this card's very good. You don't think so? I don't think so. And the reason I don't think it's very good is it gives you a good payoff of playing lands, but it's one mana to play three mana to equip and then is conditional on you still having lands later in the game yes right, right. so there there are turn it's very it's a very feast or famine -y type of card where if you have a lot of lands and you keep it up it's a, it's a much better card but those games where you're just so tight on lands it's a lot worse he's uh he's choosing between roll eruption i think he should probably take the removal spell here yeah he needs removal with the royal eruption right back there and then let's go check out what travis is doing after that maybe yeah, sure it's that removal spell royal he took it he took yeah it. he took the removal spell i'll find it here on our side monitor damn uh, it does five or th it does three damage to any target and then if you kick it does five Travis Arrogance. Let's check him out. What does he got going here? Looks like he's also doing the old uh, gruel. Meets a bit of black. He's got a lot of red, too. Yeah. He plays red almost exclusively. All of his commander decks, red. He loves his double strike. He loves his dragons. He loves his big heavy hits. He loves his fire. Um, this is also in his wheelhouse. And so I think we'll see a better performance from him tonight, too. I mean, we've all got our, perf our performance, the colors that we like. Mm -hmm. um, which one's yours? 
What combinations it, when you when you draft? What do you where do you favor? I I take what's open. Yeah. I don't think I I don't think I really ever follow follow into one color pairing when I'm drafting. It's a lot of like what do I open pack one pick one. Yeah. That's usually what I end up playing. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, for me, I, I mean, I'm I'm in a. Uh, <laughs> It's hard to describe, but I mean, I prefer playing things like Azorius and white and blue, but for some reason I do really well when I play black green it's just, and it's yeah. my least, least desired color combination to play in terms of how the mechanics play out. But when I'm drafting, most of the time I've won games or when I play ones, play color combinations like that, I don't normally prefer, which probably makes sense when you're yep. trying to draft because you, you want to draft things that aren't in your, in your desired wheelhouse, you draft what's necessary to build what's, what, what, you, what kind of deck you need to win the game. All right, where are we going? So uh, Austin has taken one of the black green cards there. He took one of the legendary black green card. Um, black green cares about 1-1 counters. So a lot of its effects uh, involve putting 1-1 counters on your creatures, changing where those 1-1 counters are, uh, and all that fun stuff. Uh, that creature there, I believe, gets, it's a th four, it's either a three, three or a four, four when it first comes in with one, one counters. So it's, it's quite strong and then it, it gets more as it goes along. Let's see. Uh, enters the battlefield with three, Grackmaw. one, one counters. It's Grackmaw. Uh, whenever another creature you control dies, if it had any one, one counters, you put those one, one counters on Grackmaw. And when he dies, you make an XX green and black Hydra where X is the number of 1-1 Hydras on him. So this card is just a recursive threat because if you have it out, they kill it, you're getting the same creature back as a token, which I think is really, really strong. And Austin, Austin's good at playing with the creature recursion like that. Yeah, he's good at playing. He's also uh, good at finding the open lane. So nobody, everybody's kind of drafting black. Everybody's kind of drafting green. Um, everybody's got, there's three people fighting over, over blue and three people fighting over red. Yeah. Table, table one. Chris made the right call jumping into, jumping into blue. Yeah, so he started drafting into the blue and he kept drafting his white. But he kept drafting the blue as well. So he kind of seems to be going for that, the blue and he white of space of creature decks. Yeah. We'll see if he ends up splashing. This set doesn't really have any good fixing. Like we saw last week where he could take all those snow lands and play all those different colors. Mm -hmm. This set isn't as forgiving when it comes to playing the extra yeah, color. You don't even have any dual lands in here, eh? Nope. And it looks uh, like Justin's there taking are, fixing there, there's a set of There's a set of two color lands at rare. And this is where the, the modal double-faced cards first came out. So the cards that are one thing on one side and one thing on the other side, and you can choose what one you want to play when you play them. They have fetch in here too, don't they? Nope. No, sorry, that was the wrong, no, wrong this, Zendikar. Well, this Zendikar <laughs> had them, but in the only in the collector's boosters. <laughs> That's why I said wrong Zendikar. Yeah. Wow, that was a rare car. Mistake a car. Um, oh, man. I don't know. These sets feel so different. You know, when you play Magic a lot, like we, we, we play Magic a lot, and, and when these sets come out, you kind of, you play them and you play them in a vacuum, but having, being able to watch them the last couple of weeks, back to back to back, mm -hmm. I didn't realize just how different they were. Yeah, how much different like, stuff like, there is going on. Dramatically different. Between like Strixhaven and this, they're just completely different. Yep. And this set, I, I'm not sure why, but Zendikar, I mean, almost every Zendikar, except for maybe Battle, this feels really well developed. Like, yep. this one feels like the mechanics really work with what the quote-unquote classic feel of magic is. Does that make yeah. sense? Am I speaking out of yeah. time, or is that like... No, so I think I think Landfall in, a, in and of itself is a mechanic that, in general, helps with a lot of formats. Because, like, what Landfall does is it smooths out those games where you keep drawing lands like game. And, and sometimes you have those cards that make playing a land feel good. And just a base routine game mechanic of magic, of playing your land so you can cast your spells, having extra effects feels good as a player. But they did a good job of balancing that so it's not crazy powerful for the most part, right? Because right. like when those effects become too powerful, then the format becomes unfun. 
because then people will just only draft the landfall decks. But this one does does well in balancing all the different colors, having an archetype that can do something in uh, in comparison to the others, right? So Chris Chris seemed to like got a rare. He's just like, why did this come around so late? I don't know what that card does. So we're gonna look uh, it up which here. Which the rare he has there? The rare he got. So, uh, it's whoop. Squad Commander. It's the rare beside the it's white uh, rare too. Yeah, and he's debating between that or oh, he's taking the other card. He's not taking so the rare. So squad commander is on your turn. If you have a Poor full party, warrior. creatures you control get plus one and plus one and gain indestructible. So if he can't fill out his party, it doesn't matter. That's the thing about a party mechanic. Oh, have you played it? Yeah. So I played I didn't this. Like it. I played this set a couple times because uh, we were in the lull of COVID last summer. So I actually got to play this a couple times in person, um, and this set was was yeah party party was just hard to do it, it, yeah it just felt like um you know like in, in uh ikoria when you had all the mutates it was very hard to mutate because you could just react and respond and break the entire chain out mm -hmm. right i just found that the party mechanic had it was difficult to sort of really get a full party effect going Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I was, I was looking at something over, grab, I'm like, just like, I'm oh, done. I thought that was a statement. Yeah. No, uh, it, <laughs> party, was, party was a fragile mechanic. It's like, you have to set up four creatures to be able to do it. I wish you guys could have seen me. I was looking over at Matt. He was just sitting there staring at the screen, looking at the cards. I'm like, and I'm okay. Wait, if you say it. No, yeah. I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just shut up. Oh, he got a flip plan. No, he didn't. No, no, no. It's just an MDFC. Oh, I remember now. Those things are crazy. I remember Leordi telling me i remember leori's telling me that he was saying that these things are bonkers because they allow you to play with such less lands yeah they, it allows you to have such m so much more economy in your deck construction yep um because a lot of the uh modal double face cards have land on one side and then a spell on the other side and you choose what they you want them to be when you want them to be yep and especially there's cards in this set that like let you put pick up lands again so they they offer that flexibility and especially in something like a format like commander is where these cards have really started to shine mm. uh in almost every command oh we got yeah <laughs> uh, in almost every uh, oh, sweet berries right here <laughs> mm, no. in almost like every format like commander i've started playing the uh the mythic rare modal double face cards in land slots i don't so, think austin set up very well Oh, I said that for, for Boros. And yeah, it, and then he kicked winning. butt. But yeah. I, I don't know. Kipling was looking really good. Yeah, we'll see what happens in this pack. I'm not sure what Travis is doing. He's got like four to all different colors there. Like, what is he doing? He's got, looks like he's got everything but white. Looks really? like he's got two, he's got white too in there. Looks like he's got everything, he's got two decks. <laughs> Travis. All right, let's see what the tried and true strategy of five color good stuff. Or as we like to say, five color bad stuff. Oh, Justin's got a, uh, he just pulled a uh, Pilath. A Phylath, yeah. Phylath, yeah. Who's like a fixed Avenger of Zendikar. Right. They like they nerfed Avenger fixed of Zendikar. Okay, Zender, I like that. Uh, made him a little bit weaker. Um, interesting. This is interesting. Chris is like Flip land. Chris is like oh, Chris has like, got a Chris morag. got a Haragamaling. He got a Morag too. Did he? Yeah, there's a Morag. Oh, that, no, that's not a Morag. That's a, a morag? Spit, it's a Spitfire Legac. The red one? Yep. Yep. It's a Spitfire Legac. Oh shit. Sure. Whatever land comes into play, deal one to, to your opponent. Yeah, it is. Looks like yeah, a it's not a Morag. Morag is a card that I play in a lot of. Yes, you do with decks. your Nizila. In my in my warrior commander deck. Okay, what else do we have going so around? Kipling's going into black here. He, he, well, he's been in black. Oh, so you're right, yeah. And it looks like Travis is torn. Austin's sticking with his black. Travis is going to take the Ondu inversion, the Wrath. Why is he taking the white? I don't know. He could be playing five color good stuff. What? Maybe he's taking it because he's playing solely creatures and he wants to not have that. I don't understand that move. He could also not want anything in the pack. Travis, could you please explain to us why he did that? We'll, we'll, he have, we'll bring him in at, uh, before we get to the game since he'd be like, what What are you doing? Um, mm -hmm. 
Okay. So Chris is torn now. Uh, is he going to splash into red? Just to take the phyla? Phyla? Probably not. He's debating. He could. If he passes it, it's going to go to... The fixing isn't great. Uh, if he passes, I'm pretty sure it goes to Rob. Although, no, he's taking the... The squid? The squid? He's no, the squid. no, he's taking the squid out. Nope. What do you think? Is he going for the uh, the white, the green, or the weird? Could take the green creature. Yeah, he's really debating. It's not a very good pack for him. And Hannah's doing pretty good. Oh, oh she's got the courage. Travis, player. here's what Travis drafted. Travis drafted the uh, the red dragon that lets you hold on to red mana. Oh, excellent. And then when it dies, you can pay red mana to deal damage to somebody. So he might just be going under the plan of find this dragon, store as much mana under it, and then throw it at somebody. Yeah, it's not a bad payoff if you can get it. But if that's your only payoff, and maybe he'll find two white to be able to cast that inversion. Although there is, it is a land as well. It's a red land on the other side. So in, in fact, is it a red land on the other side? No. It's, no? it's just a creature. Oh, okay. Well, it's a flip thing. Oh, the uh, the white card there is a yeah. white land on the other side. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, because... <sighs> um, Jack, I think, looks like he's going to take the brush fire elemental. Oh, yeah. That'd be really good for his, yeah. his red I mean, green aggro deck. Yeah. Holding. Yeah, he, yeah, that was great. And Austin, he's not. we're not seeing what his deck does. He's no, giving us no it. telegraphing. I think he's playing the black green 1-1 uh, one, one counters deck, is my guess. Oh, of there's, the, a, there's a black white land. Kippers is considering it because he's playing a combination of them. Yep. Is he going for the fixing? Yes. yes he is. Yeah, makes sense. It's a smart pick. Smart pick there, Kippy. Nicely done. And then over here, and then uh, Nosek Deluge is still doing well. Is he going for Squid? Is he going for... What's he doing? Bird? Nope. He's going for whatever that is. Oh, nope. He's changed his mind. What was he taking there? It's an instant. No, he is taking the squid. There's another royal eruption in that pack too, so wherever that ends up going. All right, Rob, what's he got here? This is pack three. Okay, he's got selection here. Annihilation. I don't know what Justin's build out is. I don't understand Justin's build out. What is the consequence? I think he's playing black, red, or black, white equipment. Who? Justin. Like, he's got Nikiri Line Slinger. He's got some equipment. So I think he's actually going to play Mardu equipment. So he's going to play black, red, white equipment cards. Oh, I see. And, like, equipment matters cards. Isn't that kind of a, isn't that a little bit glass cannon -y? It depends on the, how other players take their removal. So, I see. And there's not that much removal in this set. There are some good, there's some great removal spells kicking around, um, but a lot of it isn't super permanent removal. There is a lot of tap down stuff. If your opponent's not in black, they don't have as crazy removal. Um, but he's got an Akiri Line Slinger, which is a uh, white and red card that gives your equipped creatures indestructible by paying one and unequipping them. I mean, Chris has just totally stolen everything he's needed. He even got some fixing, too. So I he... I don't know what... Like he's probably going to try and play three colors. We'll see uh, We'll see how that goes. I mean, he's got enough blue and white. He, well, yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah, like, like you can play blue, white. The blue you can he play has blue, green. Access to. Like, look at the blue. He has access to all the blue. Yeah, some real good cards. That entire pack is almost good for him. Almost. taken he's taking the nature nope yeah he is so these are cards he's just taking out he took the to he took out. the um the phyloth out yeah he didn't want anybody else trapped in the phyloth <laughs> so even though he might not play it himself he ended up taking it because it was the best card in the pack i guess no no maybe 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 uh that's that's an into the royal into the royal is absolutely fantastic yeah it's bounce, bounce a creature, 
And then if you pay kicker, draw a card. Kicker. Bounce creature, kicker, draw a card. It's the same. It's like the same cost as a creature twice. So it's six to do that. No, no, it's four. Is it four? Yeah, it's two and two. No. Yeah, it? yeah it's two oh, and two. Oh, it is. There's another one in here that's three and three. I don't know what it is. I don't know, I don't know if it's bounced or not, but I just remember but, playing uh, it. Into the Royal is a card that's been around for a, a long time. It was in the original Zendikar set. Right. And it had the exact same effect. Uh, more red and green things for Jack. Just like Jack and Travis. They, uh, they, they are constantly playing each other in the finals. Uh... In the uh, in the other bracket, and they are. Uh, this will be interesting if they go at each other today because they're basically playing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. the they did that. Is, they did that week one as well where yeah. they played uh, Silver Coal together. The difference is. Oh. Oh, he's. <laughs> Chris is contemplating if he wants to play Phyleth. Phyleth's a maybe. He's considering playing <laughs> Phyleth. Yeah, he pulled Phyleth out of his pile of he doesn't wants to play. And then has. Uh, Put it back to the cards that he's deciding on. Is it that good? Violet is pretty good. Uh, right now, in terms of setting it up, I mean, I think I think I'm Jack getting, has a better better deck. Oh, Jack is yeah. Jack has a better deck. Well, I mean, uh, mainly because it looks like Travis is taking too many off colors and not really committing to it. Personally, go back for a second. Like, if you look at Jack, Jack is pretty much all gruel like just gruel 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 there's like very anything that he's picked off you can see it looks like it was a push whereas travis has spent a lot of his options on black blue and white like it looks like he's got 20 creatures there and like you want to be playing about 17 yeah, to 20. rob on the other hand or not rob sorry uh kippers he's he's doing okay yeah, if, if the blue if the black blue rogues can come together for him and he can get the rogue synergies and everything like that, it seems good. He has the he actually might be playing the mill strategy. Is that a maddening? I think it's what for Aaron. Yeah, he's got a maddening cacophony there. A lot of them. Um, it's the third card. Yeah, pardon me, the third card happen. down in his pile right there where Jace is holding his head. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, each opponent mills eight cards and if the spell is kicked, they mill half their library rounded up. He does that twice. If he does that once, and then has a couple rogues that you know mill one or two each time they hit you, it's a smart play. He could he could mill his opponents out pretty quickly if uh, if people are playing the standard forty card decks. What is that? Uh, it's man? much better in limited. Than so it what is. are some of the rogues that mill? Uh, we've got. Is, there, is that was does that Orzov uh, rogue mill? No. That so, would, that's not wouldn't be on color. No. Um, but he's getting a lot of good fixing. He's got those lands. He's got two lands now. That one, one land that uh, fixes and comes in as a black uh, card. And and swaps to a blue. Yeah. Yeah. The, where is it? I've got to find the. There's the signpost uncommon that uh, that does it, and it's really really strong. All right here, soaring. Uh, Soaring Thought Thief. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, he gets plus one. So, and uh, whenever one or more rogues you control attack, each opponent mills two cards. Ah. Uh, going back over here, it looks like Chris is really debating. And even the stuff he's tossed off to the side is just still more colors. Look, so more white cards. Look, more white cards. Boom. Nobody even cares. What's about open? White. White's open. White's open. White's open. Justin. No, nobody is. wanted it today. Yeah, and it looks like Deluge has got what he wanted in Simic or in uh, Demir. Oh, not very good on the draw, so he'll take the uh, the colorless probably. Yep. Put that off to the side. Okay. Well, uh, if I were to make my predictions, oh hey, what's up? Nice. You're back to support Travis. We were just commenting on Travis. We were saying that uh, he's competing with Blasphemous Jack in, in terms of deck color and construction. And uh, we were just commenting on where he's at. Um, so we're about to get to our timer. I will go tell Agent to put the timer on. And feel free to ask any questions of our, of our uh, fella in. Yeah, now. I'll be hanging out uh, as they build decks here. Who do you want to talk to? Um, whoever's done first. Okay. Um, I would like to talk to Chris and Travis for sure. Yeah. So 
Uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions in the chat there about anything or about the set, about magic in general, feel free to ask it. As they move into deck constructions, things do get a little bit more uh, dry for us here in commentary because there's not much really going on that we didn't see during the draft. Um, there, it's just if they decide to play extra colors, really. Travis has cards from all colors. I think he's playing red, white, green, it looks like. Yeah, he's, he's, he's going to play all his red cards. Where he goes from after that is kind of up in the air. Yeah, right? Five color good stuff is a tried and true uh, throw it at the wall, see if it sticks strategy. Um, Chris looks like he's deciding to play Phyleth, which is pretty cool. Uh, that puts him in four colors, but he's got Yasharn to fix him, so to find him some other cards. Um, I'm going to expect him to play two mountains in his deck. Yeah, like spaghetti, exactly. Uh, I expect him to play like two mountains in his deck, three mountains, depending on how far he goes. But he's got a lot of good blue uh, value cards. What else do we got? Jack in the very bottom right corner there. Very straightforward draft of green and red cards. Now he's just deciding what he wants to play and how many. left hand corner where the all is just does look like he's going to be playing uh, three color artifacts and stuff matter he's got to feed the swarm he's got oh he does have some fixing what does that land do let me take a look So he's got a uh, Justin, all his just drafted a, a land that lets him tap for a man of any color only to cast clerics, rogues, warriors, Base or count. wizard spells or activate their abilities. So if most of his creatures are in in those creature types, he can play. He can probably handle playing three colors like he's going to try to. Well, it looks like he's got... A lot of the white and black clerics. He's got rogues, too. Yeah, he's got clerics and rogues. He's also got some warriors in there. So, again, if he if he can uh, cut down what spells he wants to play, because you can see how he's got a ton of spells there. If he can cut that down to, you know, four, like five or six, he's, he's ready to go. He has a decent, like, instant package down below. Yep, some good removal spells. He, he looks like he's got a lot of stuff. He's got some Feed the Swarms for the sideboard, too. I don't know if I'm mistaken, but it looks like Hannah's already... Oh, looks like it, yeah. That was easy. Yep. Sometimes the decks just build themselves if you draft uh, draft along the right lines. Wow, it's fast. Come on over here. Travis is pretty close. Yep, deciding on one. what he wants to play. So he decided to take out all the color jank. He's just going to go straight gruel. His curve is okay. No, I'm eating something else. <laughs> I'm eating a chicken. The, a Swedish, chicken the Swedish berries are delicious, though. Yeah, I do have a bag of Swedish berries here. And french fries. <laughs> Yeah. All artifact or bust. All right. Well, looks like Austin's going straight. Am I, am I correct in this? He's doing his, yeah, he's doing black green. He's doing black green. All right. 
Yeah, the, I forgot that the microphones are now like properly awesome. on, so you can hear everything. So I'm not. I'm afraid to even eat now. God damn! <laughs> I didn't eat beforehand. Let's go back here. Well, Hannah's ready. Chris is definitely playing the phyla. With the pillow. He is. He's playing. He's playing four Fire. colors. He's, yep. Okay. He's drafting. He's going to take the two mountains. That's that's greedy. No, no. That's that's about what you play for a one card, one pip splash. That's what I would play for it. Is if I'm playing only one pip splash of a color, mm -hmm. I only I play two of that color. It basic. looks like uh, No Six got uh, plenty of choice. Austin's already on test hands. All right, well, do you want to send Austin back? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll send Austin back. And yeah, we'll get, try and get Austin, Trent, Chris on. And then uh, hopefully by then we'll be into some drafts. All right. I'm excited for this one. This one should be pretty cool. Um, Decent variety of decks at the table today. Not, nobody was really super on each other's toes, but a lot of people are playing three colors, which might be interesting. All right, come on in, Austin. All right, so hello everyone. If if we are correct, you drafted black and green. Uh, yeah, black and green plus one plus one counters. Yeah, okay. So you did go uh, with the the very archetypal uh, direction for this deck in this set. Did you manage to grab the signpost uncommon? Uh, the moss pit skeleton. Yeah, that was actually my push at one for that's, pack one. That's interesting. So yeah. So when when cards like that get pushed, you definitely notice that uh, it's open. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, then, I got two pack one within the last four. Picks? Oh, two Something? in pack one. Okay, yeah. wow. And you got the Grack Maw? The Grack Maw, and then the Orn Reef Ooze is my pack one pick one, which also cares with about the one, one one counters. counters. So do you so. think this deck has the potential? How much, uh, in black, how much removal did you manage to pick out? Or did you I only that? grabbed a couple Feed the Swarms. Okay. Uh, so I've got a little bit. I've got a couple combat tricks. Uh, the one that gives the plus one plus one counter, and the minus fight? one minus okay. one. Not the one that fights. Oh, which gives the plus one, yeah, okay. And the minus one minus one, yep. yeah. So I've got some stuff I can do. I've got some like the recursion with the skeletons and some long games with the shadow cat that will let my creatures when they die with plus one plus one counters draw me cards. Which one's that there? I can find it. It is Skyclave Shadow Cat. Is it a, it's a black uncommon? Black uncommon. Give me one second here, stream. It'll show up underneath our faces. Just gotta scroll up through here. I'll bring it up there because it's easier than Austin trying and holding it up. Uh -huh. Nope, that's the thing you know. No, we're in rares now. I scrolled too far. Um, there it is. Right here. Sacrifice a creature, put a 1 1 counter on it. Uh, whatever creature you control, the 1 1 counter dies, draws a card. Seems really yeah. good. All right, we're going to switch off for Travis now. Good luck, Austin. Deck seems pretty decent. Yeah, hopefully, very can, synergistic. Hopefully, hopefully, that hopefully you can grab some points and pass Chris today. Yeah. Thank you very much. Tight to get through. <laughs> All right, Travis. Hi. You're going to have to tell the stream what the heck you drafted. <laughs> oh, I'm Did not you, even sure what I drafted. Is this the, uh, the, 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 the classic five-color good stuff? Did you cut down? I ended up cutting down to two colors. Okay. But boy, it was a roller coaster from that <laughs> You went up and down. So when you settled on white and red? No, I settled on green red. Oh, green red, okay. Green red, yeah. Yeah, well, you did get the dragon. Seems cool. Yeah. Um, we'll see We'll see how it plays. How, do you, how, how confident <laughs> are you? On a scale of one to ten, four. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's a work in progress, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, is there any other cards you're super excited for other than the dragon? Anything you think is going to... Oh, the witch dragon. Good question, Samantha. Yeah, it's called the uh, Leyline Tyrant. Leyline This dude's sweet. All right. Have you ever wanted your dragon to store mana and then let you cast Fireball at instant speed? Because I have. I've done it. You just passed it. Really, up. really cool. This guy right here. Uh, a 4-4 four, four flyer that costs 4. Great on your curve. You don't lose unspent red mana as uh, your steps and phases end, so you can store it up over time. Yeah. Already very useful. It also stays red. 
It Which doesn't go to colorless good. like Horizon Stone or Crufix. And then, when it dies, so if they decide to remove it, you get to pay any amount of rent and it does that much damage to any target. That doesn't, so there's no casting cost on this fireball. If you have no. seven mana stored up, it's dealing seven. And it's usually right to the face. Yeah, if you have eight mana to stay, to, it's doing eight. If you got 20, you're killing somebody. So I'm excited to see how this card goes. Um, I, I had this in one of my pre-release kits, and it uh, it was an absolute house, especially with a lot of the mana sorters that were in this. I played it with three colors and just like had it uh, sorting mana into it every turn. It was super, super fun. But uh, cool. Good luck. Uh, well, we'll see yeah, how it goes. I did know a lot of people drafted red. Yes. Yeah, it does seem like a lot of people went into red. Blue was pretty open early. Um, I did hate draft a crab. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I don't want that video. Took the mill no crab. And then I kicked myself the third pack because I took the Amiri's call, but I should have taken the uh, the bush guy. Oh, the bush fight, yeah. Because so that's when I got past the dragon. Like, yep. Yeah, yeah you drag. didn't take the brush fight elemental. Oh, no. Well, but, uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah. All right, Travis, good luck. Yeah, enjoy the fight stream. Cool. Come on in, Chris. He just, he just took out. The he just took it out. <laughs> all right, all right. So our, our current leader in the standings, term of Chris. Yeah. I want to say, like, a pick ten bubble snare that in this set. Insane. Into the bubble it. snare. You're just like. I see you gesturing. It's like, I'm like, that's a bubble snare. What? Pay? How many cards left? There's five cards in this pack, and you're on bubble that's, snare? That was like, I saw that bubble snare, and there was no doubt in my mind I was in blue. Yeah. And yeah, like, you, like, you were you were a, f decently in green white in pack yeah. one, mm -hmm. and then that bubble snare hit, and you're like, all right, well, I'm taking the bubble, because like, yeah. the rest of the pack is blue. Also, it was a pack of all blue cards, basically. Yeah. When I when I saw that bubble snare, um, I actually mental noted it the first time, because the first time I saw it, I still considered picking it. Yeah, it around. wheeled. And so I was like, I, I noted that. And then the next pack also had a bubble snare. Yes. And I noted that as well. And then when that bubble snare wheeled, I knew it was a wheel, and I knew there was a snare in the next pack that no one would take that one either. Yeah. So that, that was part of the decision, is I actually knew there was going to be two in a row right there. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's what we were saying is yeah. like as soon as you see the that third one was ridiculous. I didn't know the third one was there. It, it was the third one in that same pack one or was it pack? Yeah, okay. But I got bubble snare, bubble snare, something Tazim, else, and then bubble snare. Tazim Royal Mage. <laughs> yeah. Who I also have I rank really highly yes, in, it's in really the comments. Uh, Tazim Royal Mage bubble snare. It's like yeah. Uh, now you are deciding to go three cut or four colors. Yeah, today, I, which is ambitious I'm, in a set with no fixing. I would not recommend that. Don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> but with, don't try four with, color no. With this wilds. many bubble snares, you're yeah. giving it a go. Did I, I, you, yeah. Did you end up getting to pick the card that's basically Harrow up? I know. I Sorry. Didn't, there's a card in the set that's basically Harrow, which is sacrifice a land, get two lands at instant speed and no. three mana. No. Okay. No, I wasn't. So. Uh, have, but you do have I the Yasharn. No, no fixing in my deck. Yasharn doesn't fix for does not fix. for red. Okay, it only gets you planes and forests. So I, I just made the last minute decision. I'm still actually on the fence about it. I made the last minute decision to not play the red card. Okay. Um, I'm gonna leave it in my sideboard. So my my philosophy with this red card right now is that if I need to go bigger or more valuable against some decks, I'm gonna side it in. Okay. So it's gonna stay out in case I run into aggro or I'm on the draw. Um, game one. Yeah. Seriously. But if I if I'm on the play and need extra value or if I'm against like control or slower lists, I'm probably gonna sideboard into it. Yeah. I think Firelit is a really good rare. It's, it's so a very good. bomb. It's a very bomby rare. Yeah. Um. It, so it will win games on its back if you resolve that. When card. you picked it, we were like. Okay, well, it's either gonna like sit in the sideboard and come in, yeah, or it's just it's just being taken out of the pack. Yeah, I I, I did that was like I did hate draft it as well. I was looking <laughs> okay. at that and it was like it was halfway between like I want this, I might play it. I'm, I when I took that, I was thinking this is sort of a hate draft and sort of like if I hit an evolving wilds, I'll probably play yeah. it. Yeah, that's but fair. The evolving wilds never came. I was not able to get any fixing at all. So so I think I'm gonna leave in the sideboard. If I got like one or two pieces of fixing, I probably would have yeah. Better. Yeah, there's definitely not a ton of fixing in the set as we were we were talking about yeah. there's there's a following wilds there's a couple green ramp spells yeah um 
And then there is the the dual colored yeah. uh, lands at rare. The the one other consideration that's pushing me a little bit towards playing it is I have two cards. I'm not actually really familiar with this card, but I have two cards called Spring Mantle Cleric in my deck. I can bring it up here. And uh, it's basically got Converge. Is it a it's a green? It's green uncommon. Spring Mantle Cleric, green uncommon. Green uncommon. So it's basically got, got Converge, which means it's the better it's better the more colors of mana you spend to cast it. And since I have two of them, it kind of makes me want to play like one land of an extra color. Yeah. Yeah, you want to play that uh, one or two extra, the two extra. Uh, so, so that's there. also that's why I had it in and then cast the last minute. I'm actually I'm still thinking about this. I'm still on the fence between playing that one to two mountain well, that rare. Before uh, before the uh, the game gets started, give us a thumbs uh, <laughs> a thumbs up. Like point your thumb towards yourself, and then we'll we'll know that's the secret signal that you're playing. Uh, the Phylath in the main board if you do decide on it. Oh yeah, give us the okay. I think I think you can probably assume I'm not going to have it in the main board, but I'm very likely to sideboard into it as a, honestly, even just as a gotcha. Yeah. Um, out of anything, so. I think yeah. we're ready. What, do you want to cool. shot one more? Yeah, ready? I think we're good to go if everybody's ready to get going. All right, good luck, Chris. Thank you. I'm ready to bubble snare it out. And we will be right back. I'm going to hit the button here. All right, Adrian, need a little bit more time to finish up some things on the tech side. Focusing the camera. So we've got Robin with us. Uh, now you had a couple couple choice picks in the draft. You got a J. You got the Jace. I got the Jace. Did you end up going with the black blue rogues, or did you end up going black white? I went black blue rogues. All right. That, that's kind of where the focus was. Um, I wanted to go green. I started with it a little early. Um, but it's just seeing it all evaporate so fast. Yes. It was, it was gone. Yeah, a lot of people were deciding that they wanted to play some green. Um, did you get any of the other cards in the set that uh, oh, yeah. helped That's mill, or did you get any of the cards that... Uh, that really um, synergize with the rogue stuff or the party stuff? Um, I tried to build a party. Um, okay, it kind of worked out. Uh, I did get a lot of rogue heavy um, synergy. Uh, you know, multiples of certain rogues. Um, my pack two pick one was a little weird. I, I had to go with the uh, with the Leviathan Crab. <laughs> Cherish the, the Raven Isle. It, I, opened, I wanted it just because you know it was a body, which I which I you know didn't really have anything reliable. I figure I can maybe you know turn it into a finisher, but uh, realistically this Jace, this deck is going to be focused on Jason Rogues. So, cool. and Delay of Game asks, are you happy with the draft? Uh no. No, <laughs> so I, I am at an all-time low in confidence right now, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, we'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks, thanks for jumping in with us. All right, let's do uh, it. We will get some pairs to Adrian, and then we're uh, we're gonna get underway here. All right, all right. Time to get some pairs, pairs or berries. Time to get some berries. Pairs of pairs of berries. Sweet berries. I'm gonna have a sweet berry. All right. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Yummy! Let's see. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. Who we got? Who we got paired today? Rob. Rob. Right, write them down. E. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll go back to the main. We'll go back to the main screen. Rob versus Rob's playing Justin. Mm, these berries are so good. And only eleven pieces. Per eleven pieces, it's one hundred and forty calories. So I'm about halfway there. I can go for six more pieces until I hit my proverbial calorie limit. <laughs> no. Travis and Jack oh, playing God, the first kidding. round. I was talking to Jack over there, and he was just like, he was like, yeah, I'm probably going to be up against Travis. I'm like, 
<laughs> I think they both told each other what they were playing, so it's going to be definitely good. And Hannah is playing. Looks like awesome. all is just and uh, Annihilation are practicing. Just playing some test games. All right. I've got, is over. You got that note. All right. Here we go. The secret note. We got our first standing. All right. I am ready. So we'll see them here closing up their games and then taking their name cards with them. 